Hey everyone, it's Jason Dunn here from Zoom Thoughts, and the moment that I've been waiting for for quite a while, and hopefully some of you guys too, has arrived. This is of course the moment that the uh, Zoom HD is uh, finally released. So uh, what I'm holding here is just a standard uh, retail box for Zoom HD. Uh, this is the 16 gigabyte model that comes in black. Uh, we're just going to uh, you know open it up. We'll take a look. Although I will start out by saying um, I'll, I'll get this out of the way right up front. So, 16 gigabyte model in black. The 32 gigabyte model is in platinum. At the time of this video, there is no uh, higher capacity Zune. However, uh, Zune Originals. Uh, by the time you're watching this video, they should be selling uh, the Zune HD in red, blue, and green. And you can get that in either 32 gigabyte or 16 gigabyte capacity. So that gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of color. And capacity. In terms of pricing as of uh, today, which is um, or at least uh, mid September, the uh, 16 gigabyte model, which is this one here, is selling for $219.99 US, and the 32 gigabyte model is going to be selling for $289.99. Again, prices will always change, so the best thing you can do is go to Amazon.com, Newegg, wherever you're going to buy it from, and check out the uh, most current price. All right, so here it is the Zoom HD. Let's crack open the box here. Ah, there it is. So, um, unlike uh, a lot of other people in the world uh, that have been uh, a lot of other technology guys like myself, uh, I've never actually held the Zune HD. Wow, that is just gorgeous. That is so slim. Um, you know, I read it was slim. I saw the uh, specifications online. You know, uh, telling me that it was slim. But until you actually, you know, see this thing. Um, it's really hard to appreciate how thin and light it is. Wow, it is so light. I'm, I'm really impressed. I, I kind of thought that, uh, you know, with uh, the bigger screen that, that it was going to have a bit more heft, but I guess because, of course, it's uh, flash-based, uh, so this is not the uh, hard drive, or there is no hard drive version of the Zune HD. So this is all flash memory, and, of course, that means that it's going to be quite a bit lighter, you know, than uh, the Zune uh, HD, for instance. So, um... I guess we'll just walk around the device and we'll uh, sort of take a look at what it features. So the first thing up here is we have uh, the power button. Basically, you press the power button to turn it on. Uh, you press it to turn it off or to turn it into lock mode. And I believe, I'll test this out later, but I think if you press and hold the power button, it puts it into sort of the deep sleep mode, which saves some battery life. Uh, you have a, a button here. Uh, now, this is not a volume button. I believe that when you press this button, it brings up the uh, now playing controls. And then down here, you have another button, which is essentially just a home button. Um, and that's basically it. Nothing on the side here. Uh, down at the bottom, we have a, a headphone jack. Gosh, I really wish they would have put the headphone jack up top. It's, it's always awkward when you have uh, you know, a cable coming out the bottom of your device. So that's kind of weird. Uh, this is the uh, Zune uh, connector port. Um, again, uh, this connector port is uh, the same standard as it is for other Zune. So if you have other Zune accessories, uh, the same connector port uh, will work with it. Although, you know, there may be certain things uh, like the uh, kicker, the ZK500. I've heard that uh, if you dock this with the ZK500, it will in fact work, but the, the uh, kicker remote control won't work. So there are going to be some little glitches that companies are going to have to uh, uh, work around. So let's just, I'm not sure if this thing has a charge. So, oh, there we go. It's booting up here. So there is the Zune logo on the gorgeous OLED screen. I'm really looking forward to checking this out in person because I haven't actually ever seen, uh, again, this OLED screen. Cool. It's got a little uh, little boot animation here. And there it is. So I'm just going to take kind of a closer peek here. Oh, wow, that is gorgeous. That is uh, just really, really sharp and crisp. And here is, uh, here's a video. Um, yeah, so it looks like that video is just in, uh, in portrait mode. So I'm just sort of uh, looking at the screen here while this is playing. And my God, it is uh, so crisp and bright. I mean, OLED screens are sort of known for their brightness and vibrancy, and this is fantastic. I mean, this looks um, this looks just a thousand times better than the Zune, um, you know, the Zune 120 or the Zune 80 screen. And I'll, I'll do some I'll do some other comparisons because I have an iPod Touch, uh, the 16 gig model, the previous version, and uh, this looks far far better than that screen does too. So uh, yeah, Microsoft definitely did a really really cool thing by going with uh, the OLED screen. I'll just kind of see if I can get a little bit closer to the camera. So if you're watching this in HD, you can maybe appreciate 
uh, you know, the vibrancy of the colors that, uh, that you're seeing there. So we'll press this button here. We'll go back to the home. Now I'm shooting this on uh, the 14th. Now this is a day before the Zune is officially released. And on, what that means, unfortunately, is that uh, I can't actually synchronize this with a desktop computer, which means I can't get the updated software, which means I can't show you what that software looks like yet, and I also can't show you, um, you know, how, how to load stuff up on here. So what we'll do is we'll walk through some of the basics here, but I'm going to be doing a follow-up video after I get the new 4.0 software. I'll be doing a video on the 4.0 software, the new features it has, et cetera, et cetera. But right now we're just going to kind of, you know, do sort of a, bit of a uh, bit of a basic walkthrough with the zoom so as you can tell um Wow, okay, so I'm just gonna say this right now. After being a long time, you know, Microsoft fan using Windows Mobile devices, portable media center devices, uh, you know, previous Zunes, it is so exciting to see speed. And this seems like a minor thing, but if you've ever used any other device and, you know, you switch it from landscape to portrait, it's really brutal how slow, frankly, most Windows Mobile devices are. To me, this looks as fast, if not faster and smoother um, than what happens on an iPod. So Microsoft did, you know, a fantastic job there. Um, obviously, we have a touch screen. Uh, very, very sensitive. Like I'm, I'm sort of, I'm just barely, just barely touching it here, and it's still, it's still responding. So, uh, you know, fantastic job there. I'm just going to press the button here. Yeah. So. When you press the button on the top left here, you'll see that uh, this this, to this toggle comes up. So basically, that's going to be uh, that's going to be your volume toggle. That's going to be previous track, next track, and then that of course is going to be play and pause. And then you can just click exit. Oh, there we go. I dropped the zoom. So it happens. These things happen when you're doing videos. Uh, sturdy. Thankfully, this is a nice, so a nice soft plastic. So even though it sounds like I'm, you know, dropping things and uh, you know hurting them, I'm really not. So don't worry. The zoom, uh, the zoom survived. Okay, so that is, um, I'm just going to look at, at music now, and actually I'm, I'm going to kind of do that again because I, I want you guys to see how smooth the animation here is, right? So it's really, really smooth here. So I think I can go, yes, yeah, so I can move left and right, you know, to sweep back and forth, um, and then of course if I had actual content here, I could sweep up and down and you'd be able to see it there. You press the home button to go home. Um, videos. There's that one video that I showed you. If, oh, I'm, I'm assuming that once you get other categories of videos, you'll be able to sweep left and sweep right. So nothing too special there. Pictures I already showed you, but eventually you'll be able to, once I get more photos loaded, you can sort by folder, by date. Uh, and of course that means that once, once you load up the Zoom HD with, you know, personal photos, you'll be able to find them a lot easier. We also have radio. Um, unfortunately, I can't use the radio, so it says, you know, continue uh, to sync the Zoom software on your PC. So I can't use the radio right now. This has HD radio. I'll go over the specs uh, after in just a minute. I can't really do anything with social, and I can't really do anything with more. Uh, I don't think, yeah, the internet isn't going to load. That would be, I'm assuming, uh, the actual web browser. So this does come with a web browser. And then these are, of course, uh, some of the settings. So I can just go in here to wireless. Okay, can't do anything there. Display can't do anything there. So you're seeing a theme here, and that theme is that you can't really do anything with the Zune HD until, um, oh, I can change the language, that's kind of cool. You can't really do anything with the Zune HD until you synchronize it, and that's just kind of an unfortunate reality of uh, the way Microsoft ships these products. So let's go through and let's just do uh, some of the specs. Uh, I'm gonna go pretty quick here because I wanna try to keep this under 10 minutes. So 2.6 ounces, uh, 74 grams is the weight. Uh, size 52 millimeters uh, this way by 102 millimeters, 0.1 millimeters this way, and it's only 8.9 millimeters thick, so or thin, so it's nice and thin. It has a 3.3 inch OLED uh, color display, 19, uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so widescreen. The resolution is 480 by uh, 272. I'll talk about that more a little bit later. Uh, wi Fi built in is 802.11bg. It supports a bunch of wireless encryption modes, no surprise there. It has a lot of the same support for file types uh, as the previous Zoom. So it supports JPEG, uh, WMA lossless, um, MP3, and I believe it also supports AAC, and it supports WMV for video, MPEG-4, including H.264. And um, yeah, so it has analog audio out. It's got a built-in FM and HD receiver. And um, 
Oh, there we go. We're, we're about to bust over the 10 minute mark. So I guess, I guess this has now become a YouTube exclusive video. Unless I cut here and say switch to YouTube and watch the whole thing. All right, now we're going to look over uh, at what else is in the box. We have a 14-day uh, uh, Zoom Pass. If you've never used the Zoom Pass, it's actually a really cool, uh, it's a really cool product, so it's definitely worth uh, considering. So this is sort of uh, just a little pamphlet, a little brochure. Uh, this talks a little bit about the stuff that uh, comes with the Zoom sort of ecosystem, I guess you would say. And then also inside the box here, we have... Not going to be anything too exciting, but it's going to be, you know, basically like the headphones and whatnot. So, okay, there's the box. We have headphone ear covers, just like the previous generation Zoom, nothing too special. Uh, we have the pre we have the uh, the headphones. Um, so these are these are not the uh, premium headphones like you would get with the uh, like with the Zoom 120 if you got them from Zoom Originals. These are just the regular Zoom headphones. As far as headphone goes, headphones go, they're pretty good, uh, but nothing too spectacular. I would definitely advise you to go and get some different headphones. And then uh, this is the uh, Zoom HD sync cable. So this is the sync and charge cable. You plug it into USB uh, to get power, and then you uh, plug it into your computer, of course, to uh, synchronize and transfer over all your videos and whatnot. And then we have, what do you have here? The product guide, so just a bunch of uh, stuff there. And of course, that's the uh, the welcome thing. So yeah, so this is uh, the Zoom HD. Um, since this video is now going a little bit long, I might as well stop and talk a little bit more about the actual device. So the Zoom HD uses NVIDIA's Tegra processor. So this is a dedicated graphics processor that allows the Zoom HD to play back high definition content uh, directly on the device. Now you might be saying, wait a second, when you uh, talked about the screen resolution and the fact that it was only uh, 272 by 480, well, Jason, that's not high definition. You're right, on the device, it's not high definition. What you do is you connect the dock to the bottom, and uh, now I don't have a dock right yet, I'm hoping to get one soon. When you connect the dock, it has an HDMI out, and what you do is you actually simply connect that to your HD television, and then you can use the Zoom to play back um, HD content. Now a lot of stuff's going to be happening on the 15th. You're going to see the Zoom Marketplace updated, and it's going to be updated uh, with a whole bunch of uh, new video content. And the rumor is that that is, of course, going to be uh, HD video content for download, you know, for rental, but also for purchase. So that's going to really uh, that's going to really change, you know, uh, the the equation because you'll be able to, uh, you know, just like iPhone users can, iPod Touch users can with uh, iTunes, you can go to iTunes and download, you know, movies and rent them or buy them. And the Zoom is essentially going to have exactly the same thing. So that is um, super exciting. Now, what is a bit unfortunate is that I would have loved it if the uh, screen resolution on this device would have been um, high definition, you know, straight from the start. So if this would have had a high def screen on it, um, that would have been cool. Now, of course, the problem is that as far as I know, there aren't any OLED high definition screens out there. So it would have been nice if maybe they were able to get an, an enhanced resolution. But you know, I, I initially was really kind of bummed out that it was going to have it was going to have a lower resolution. But when I when I flip through the pictures and when I look at this video, I, I gotta say um, the resolution it looks really really good. Um, I'm gonna you know uh, rip rip my own DVD to uh, this particular resolution and I'll watch it you know and I'll do some tests and some other videos. But my my first impression is that this screen looks better than I thought, frankly, at, at this resolution. So, you know, good good job uh, from the Zoom team. One of the things that is worth being aware of is that, unfortunately, the fact that they kind of got rid of, of, of most of the buttons on the device, frankly, I think that eh, kind of sucks a little bit. I mean, it, you know, it'd be really nice to be able to reach into your pocket and be able to press, you know, a button to uh, um, uh, make the volume go up and down or even be able to have, you know, a dedicated play, pause buttons. A lot of people, you know, will keep MP3 players in their jackets or in their pockets and they like to be able to just, you know, reach in and uh, adjust the device. And unfortunately, you can't really do that because it's a touch screen device. You pretty much are going to have to take it out of your pocket, you know, press the button to bring up the volume and then you can actually uh, adjust just the volume there. Um, oh, that is worth noting. The volume goes up to 30. Uh, I, unless, if memory serves on the previous device, it actually only used to go up to um, a volume level of, uh, I think it's 20 or something like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to pause the camera here. I'm going to grab my iPod Touch and a previous generation Zoom, and then we'll do a little bit of a size comparison between um, these devices. Hang on a second. <laughs> 